Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. In this video I'm going to be covering how I vacuum form, dye, and tint my Halo Infinite Master Chief visors. And these visors are available in my shop in the three different forms that we'll go through. The clear plastic, the dyed plastic, and then the dyed and tinted plastic. The version that you see now. You can find links to those in the description, but let's get right into the tutorial. Now all the visors begin with this. It is a visor buck, and it is the form that we're gonna be pulling the warm plastic over. Here I blow it off with a compressed air gun because we need to make absolutely sure that this surface is clean and free of any dust or particulates because those will show up on the visor underneath the plastic if they're left on there. All the visors start out as this, a 12 inch by 12 inch sheet of PETG 0.06 inches thick. The first thing I've got to do is take off both sides of the protective film, and then we're going to clamp it inside this aluminum case and check again for dust and debris with the compressed air gun and blow it off if necessary. We are then going to need to heat up the PETG, so I'm going to put it between these two space heaters in this really janky rig that I put together, and this is going to heat up that PETG and it's going to begin to sag. Now these are just two space heaters that I bought from the store. Took out the feature to where it, if it tips over it turns off because obviously we need it on its side. But then I just built a wooden frame around it to hold it in place close to the sheet of plastic. I originally only used one above the sheet of plastic but found out that it just wasn't heating the plastic hot enough for it to start warping so I added a second one underneath. Over the course of a few minutes the PETG is going to begin to sag. You don't want it to sag too far. Otherwise you'll start to get bubbles in your sheet, but you need it to sag enough to where it's pliable and malleable and it will actually form around the visor buck. So after a few attempts I've marked in Sharpie where I want the plastic to sag to, it's just about like an inch, but once it's there we will remove it from the space heaters and get it ready for vacuum forming. So here's a look at the vacuum forming chamber before things kick off. It's very simple, we've just got a shop vac hooked up to our chambered platform. This is what the visor buck is going to sit on and you can see it has a bunch of holes in it. That's so that the air can be sucked out by the shop vac, forcing the plastic down and around the visor buck. Okay, here we go. We are ready to pull the plastic from the heaters. The shop vac is on and we're going to carry this PETG sheet over to the visor buck and slowly but firmly press it down over it. Eventually a seal will form and the air will be sucked out from around the visor, forcing that plastic down, taking the shape of whatever is underneath it. So after the plastic has formed around the visor buck, I'm going to take my compressed air gun again and blow it off, but this time in an attempt to cool it a little bit quicker so it'll be easier to remove. We'll unclamp the plastic sheet from the frame and begin working the visor buck out of the plastic. It's a little bit of a chore, but eventually you can see that we have a very clear visor. You can see I hold it up to the light to check for any imperfections. That's why we worked so hard to remove all the dust and debris before we formed it. But now we'll take it above the recycling bin and trim off the excess with a pair of tin snips. The tin snips I found were a lot easier than household scissors to cut this plastic with because it's a little bit thicker. Okay, the last step for the clear visors is going to be using this Plastex solution to really buff it all out. Make sure that there are no fingerprints, no smudges, so that it is perfectly clear. We'll clean both sides, one because it looks nice, and two, we wanna make sure that the surface is also clean for the dyeing process. Okay, now we are ready to start dyeing these things their golden yellow color. So I've got a big pot of water on the burner. We're gonna bring this up to a boil. You only need enough water to where it covers the entire visor. So we'll come back once that water is boiling. Okay, now that the water has come to a rolling boil, we are ready to add our dye packets. Now it's very important that you get the iDye Poly version of the dye. Otherwise, it will not bond to the plastic. This is specifically made for plastics instead of fabrics. And I am using the golden yellow color. Opening the package, the dye is contained in a little baggie. You can just throw the whole thing in. The outer plastic will melt in the boiling water and dispense the dye into the water. Now there's also a color intensifier. We'll peel that open and then pour that liquid into the pot. Give everything a stir, make sure that all of the dye is dispersed, all of the plastic is melted. Once we're there, we need to wait for this water to cool back down because otherwise if we put our visors in right now, they would warp and misshape. And we wanna wait until the water is about 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature that is safe for PETG. And so we'll come back in around half an hour after this thing has cooled a bit. So once the water is cooled back down, we will put in our visors and start a timer for 10 minutes. Once that 10 minutes is up, we're gonna put on a glove and transfer all of the visors from our pot of hot water to a pot of cold water to really seal in that color. 
and just to kind of cool down the visors a little bit. Now you can see right now it's not very golden yellow. It's going to take a few times of doing this. I think I do it here around four or five times. And you can see after each successful soak of 10 minutes in that dye water, it gets darker and darker until you have a nice deep golden yellow color. Once we've got the color down, we're gonna take these out, let them air dry overnight, and then we are going to repeat the Plastex buffing and cleaning just to clean off any excess dye or any watermarks like that to make sure that the surface is clean once more for the tinting process. Now the goal here is to be able to see out of the visor but not have people see into the visor to see your eyes. And to do that, we're going to be using some Spastix Mirror Chrome paint out of an airbrush. We're going to paint it all over the inside of the visor only. Now this will kind of cloud your vision inside a little bit, but if you remember from the beginning of the video, you couldn't see any part of my face once I put the helmet on, but I could see out fairly clearly. The difficult part of this is going to be trying to get an even coat of the chrome paint on the inside, and you're going to want to check it against different light levels to make sure that you have all the parts covered. Now it's important to remember that once the visor is installed in the helmet, the inside of the helmet is going to be very dark. That's what's going to help prevent people from being able to see into the visor. So if you feel like you're just not putting down enough paint, hold it in a dark area and see if you can see into it. That's kind of the test and the benchmark that I used, and Chrome can be very deceiving sometimes, but remember that the inside of the helmet is going to be dark, so test it against those conditions. So there you go guys, that is how I vacuum form, dye, and then tint my Halo Infinite Master Chief visors. I hope you guys found this tutorial informing for your own Master Chief builds and for prop making in general. Remember to check the description for those links of those products if you just wanna buy one of these yourself. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.